we're trying to discover what this wants to be. So this helps us figure out what are those images? What are the things we can do other than just say it? Like, I loved her, I'm sad. Nobody wants to hear that. Make them feel that. Hi, my name is Joshua Leventhal, I'm a songwriter. And here's a little bit of my process for when I'm writing lyrics. It'll help you if you're just getting started. Joshua is a Canadian Juno nominee. He has 142,000 monthly Spotify listeners, and he's taught songwriting courses in multiple college and conference settings. What does each part of a song, section of a song, accomplish? So you have verses, choruses, and bridges are gonna be your most common structure. You're gonna have that expressed oftentimes like, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Like that's a very common song structure. You might have a pre-chorus in there too, but like most songs kind of come down and can be classified in that way. So I like to talk about the verse as plot development. And I don't mean plot development like your, every song is a narrative, you're not like doing a musical novel or anything like that, but rather just that it is where you introduce ideas, it's where you set up premise, concept, that kind of thing. It gets people kind of understanding, okay, I think I understand what this is talking about. Um, is where you can kind of move that stuff forward. Um, the chorus is kind of the main idea of the song and it should have the most kind of distinct, hooky feeling. Whatever comes out of your mouth there is kind of the main thing you're trying to get across. And then a bridge is where we introduce contrast. And ideally that would be both musical contrast, introducing like a new chord, a new melodic idea, harmonic idea, um, or introducing a new lyric idea, possibly both. But if we break it down into those little bite-sized pieces, it's a lot easier to go, okay, how do we wanna approach this? I have this thing I wanna write about, how do I take that and actually turn it into something that I'm saying that's meaningful and beautiful? So if we understand the roles that those sections play in the song, that makes it a lot easier. One of my main ways of doing this, that I still do, I've been doing this for over 10 years, is clustering. So um, it's just easiest if I just show it. So. Ron, give me something, you just, anything you think about. Uh, how about a vase? A vase. <laughs> did you see that out of the corner of your eye? I did. <laughs> okay. I just put vase in the center of this piece of paper. Okay, what are things you think about when you think about a vase? Uh, flowers. Okay, flowers. Holding flowers. Holding flowers. Yeah, right, it holds flowers. As I'm writing things down, I'm thinking like, do these things belong together or are they something kind of separate? But like, okay, we got flowers as an offshoot, holding flowers would be an offshoot of that. Okay, so what are some other things? Uh, containing water. Containing water, okay, just, and then like, uh, just containing in general. Okay, give me something else. Um, a gift. A gift, okay, like it's, it might be a gift, it also might be uh, what is holding the gift, right? It's like rarely the thing that, that people care most about, they care about what's inside it. Okay, so we've got some ideas here. We've got, we've got vases in the center. Now, here's the thing. The song may or may not actually ever end up being about a vase. We just started there. Um, we're trying to discover what this wants to be. Not just like the face value things, but more around the things that are a little bit more abstract, a little bit more felt. So things like it's fragile, it's breakable. Um, it's the means of holding a gift. Um, also really helpful uh, in that process is use a thesaurus all the time. Like thesaurus.com should be your best friend. Uh, writing, uh, like a, you, have a, you have a word, you know you wanna say something, what are some synonyms for it? What are some other things to say? Um, the question we should always be asking as a writer is, is there a better way to say this? A lot of times the, the best thing in, in anything is show, don't tell, right? It's, it's use imagery. This helps us figure out what are those images? What are the things we can do other than just say it? Like, I loved her, I'm sad. Nobody wants to hear that. Make them feel that in their bones. And then what we wanna do is we just wanna take those sections we talked about, right? Verse, chorus, plot development, all of those kind of things. And we just wanna figure out, okay, what, where does this make sense? I'm what I'm. I'm the one who brings the flowers, but I'm never like the desired thing itself. We can start to set that up in a verse a little bit, um, and then we can get to the chorus and go, okay, like what does it feel like to be dropped? And then we can take the bridge and we can either start to turn it like we can either like if we want it to end dire, we can like like double down, or we can start to turn it where like you could wonder what it's like to actually be the flower and not and not the vase. People who haven't figured it out, will sacrifice phrasing in order to make lines rhyme. And great writers will do the exact opposite. They will 
uh, prioritize phrasing. They'll make sure the phrasing is great. And this will oftentimes make you, you, a person think that a song is rhyming when it's actually not. One of my favorite examples of this is uh, The Cave by Mumford and Sons. Like the whole line goes like, it's empty in the valley of your heart. The sun, it rises slowly as you walk away from all the fears and all the faults you left behind. And not a single word in there rhymes. Um, it doesn't even come close to rhyme. He kind of cheats because he uses a British accent. But you don't think about the fact that it doesn't rhyme because you're just thinking about the fact that that feels inherently good. And, it, and the lyrics feel great. Like they're very poetic. They're very well written. He doesn't bother with the rhyming. So, um, and this is where the, the more you can expand your vocabulary. And again, like it's best if you've read a lot, but if you haven't, just use a thesaurus. I still use a thesaurus. I've read a lot and I use a thesaurus all the time. But this can really help uh, A, find more interesting words, but B, also find uh, words with different syllable counts. Because if you want really good phrasing, you want to have options as far as how many syllables a word has because what we want to avoid doing is getting like these really like we like either like really awkwardly drag out a word or we try to cram a bunch of syllables into a space that don't really fit. Um, that's that's what often happens when people are trying to make something rhyme is they end up like not actually letting words sit comfortably in a phrase. And so the more options you have of oh could I swap this out because it has one more syllable or one less syllable really good practice is trying to live in a way where you never turn it off as a taker in of the world of art of beauty um, Roseanne Cash was on a podcast and they asked her this is Johnny's daughter and they asked her like do you write songs every day and she said I don't write songs every day but every day I'm a songwriter and I think that's the difference between somebody who really gets it and doesn't. You know, people ask like, what's your favorite piece of gear? Like, honestly, my favorite piece of gear is this because all I do all the time is just sing into this thing. Like you can see, these are all just voice memos. I have this with me at all times and I will just like, literally sometimes me and my wife will be like driving and I'll just be like, sorry, I need to pull over on the side of the road and just give me one second here. And I'll, I'll just like hum or, or, or say some ideas into the voice memo app. I think take the pressure off of needing to like sit down in a DAW and like get these like really, really high quality pieces of, of demo or anything laid down like that. Like you need a piano or a guitar and your voice and a phone and just sing something crappy as long as you can remember it. I don't want to spend a ton of time setting up a really nice scratch track to a tempo I might actually use to a demo that probably won't make the final cut anyways. So I want to just make sure that I'm like recording the ideas, making sure the ideas themselves are good. You know what you want to express, you just don't know how to make it compelling. And what we've done is we've looked at some ways to do that. You can be listening throughout your entire life in as active a way as possible, having your phone on you at all times ready to sing into it. You can also you just use really simple tools like a thesaurus. Um, dictionary. You want to try to take things as far as you can with strong phrasing. And then ultimately what you want to do is you just want to do it in as low stakes an environment as possible. You want to do it on your phone, you want to do it on a piece of paper, something that you have no problem deleting, throwing away. The way that you're going to get better is just to do it. Um, and hopefully these are some tools that can help you do that. All right, so we're going to announce the winner from last week's contest in the comments, and that is Ephraim Cooper 871 We're also going to be doing another giveaway this week. We're going to give away a Native Instruments Complete Control M32 Micro-Sized Keyboard Controller. This is a bare-bones keyboard, but it's what Joshua uses to write his music. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go away and try some of Josh's techniques, and I want you to come back and tell me how it went in the comments, and I'm gonna pick my favorite one. Good luck with your songwriting, and we'll see you here next week.